Hey everybody, this is an important message for progressives in Oregon. Last night I had this awesome conversation with Valdez Bravo, the first vice chair of the Democratic Party of Oregon, and this guy, Adam Klugman. Unfortunately, the first four minutes of that conversation had some serious audio issues. Don't know what happened there. Uh, so this is an edit of that video. I'm going to take down the live video. And this is like the first half of that interview with Adam and Valdez. We're talking about branding as a candidate and uh, what it means. What does that mean to have a brand as a candidate or a personal brand? Adam is a specialist in, uh, with this in media in terms of strategy and, and uh, branding. And he's doing a conversation, a presentation this Sunday, October 14th at 7 p.m. at the Lake Theater Cafe in Lake Oswego. He's going to be talking about the history of the brand, the Democratic Party brand, and show how Democrats have broken the golden rule of branding by allowing the Republicans to control our narrative. Basically, the Republicans have put out the narrative of what Democrats are, and we've kind of adhered to that, and it's time to take back our brand and own it. And I love what Adam has to say. If you're thinking about running in 2020, or if you are a candidate right now, uh, for 2018, I would go to this. I think it's 10 bucks a ticket, uh, well worth it to hear this presentation. We'll have Adam back on after the Sunday, but go to this. Uh, Valdez will be speaking, uh, Adam will be speaking, and uh, I think it's worth it for everybody who's thinking about getting in the game uh, for 2020 as a candidate. You need to know how to, how to own your brand and how to hold your ground with your values, no matter who you're talking to out there, right, as a voter. So here you go, here's the first half. And then look for the second half to be put up a little bit after this. Thank you. Uh, all right. So you're back in the game. You're doing this thing on Sunday. Whose right. brand is it anyway? And we're, we're talking about branding and, and, and just, you know, you and I and I'm sure Valdez uh, have experience in what that means in general for business. And whatnot. What does that mean when you're talking about a candidate or a party? How does that apply? It's, it's it's a great question. Um, so I'm going to talk about it kind of at the outer layer and then work my way back in. At the outer layer, all an opinion really, all a brand is, is really just an opinion, right? It's just the opinion people have of your product or in the case, your candidacy. That, that, that's all it really is. It's, it's, it's a strategic, well-managed opinion that companies put into your head. Why? Because they don't trust you to form your own opinion, right? And so, so, and I think that's pretty bold. <laughs> I'm not only do I own my own company, I own as much, of, I feel entitled to own as much of my own, your opinion of my company as possible. But that's the world that we live in. And, and I think something that brands do that I, that I would like to help candidates do is a brand is really, uh, the innermost layer is a claim of ownership. It says, this is who I am. This is the best of who I am. This is what I stand for. This is my offer to you. And these are things that get in the in the private sector have to get articulated, do get articulated because there's lots of money on the table. So consumers need to know what my offer is, what I stand for, what what how your life's going to be better be if you use me. And so I transpose those same principles and try to work with candidates, getting them to make a claim of ownership on their deepest values, on the things that really matter to them, and then help them find a way to express those to voters in aspirational terms. All right, that's fantastic. Can I ask you a question? I, I, yeah, it does. It does, uh, and and it leads into uh, a question that I'm. We're just going to dive deep here. Thank you, Melissa H. <laughs> uh, she just put this out here in chat. Many corporate Dems are trying to brand themselves as progressives, trying to fool us. And she's talking about the aspect of branding that you kind of mentioned at when you say corporations want to create that brand because they don't trust us to make it, and we've definitely seen a disingenuous branding. In, in many ways. So so how do we avoid that? How do, how do we avoid um, that? Well, I mean, I think that we, we is it Melissa? Yeah. We, Melissa, she's yeah. smart. She knows a hen turkey from a tom when she sees it, right? Uh, I think a good example of, of how do we avoid it? We, we, we trust our gut, right? We have to be willing to go out there and put our values out there. There's gonna, just like in, in the green movement, there's greenwashing of products. Absolutely. It comes out eventually. We see it. We smell it. We know the truth. We know. Newt Bueller's doing, are doing actually, a, 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 unfortunately, doing at least initially did a very good job of, you know, pay, progressive washing himself, trying to turn himself into a progressive. And, Agreed. and I'm like, where, where's Kate? Come on, Kate. Tell, let him know that this is not that that that. 
This isn't the truth. So I think that, but what's happening is voters are getting hip to it. They're understanding that Newt Bueller is not a progressive. So it's a really good question and it's a really, it's an ongoing concern. And we as, as Democrats have to watchdog it and we have to call it, call, call the bullshit out when we see it. Well, true. So it's our, so on the one side as a constituent, it's our, you're saying it's our responsibility to recognize and say you're, you're, you're full of shit. But as a candidate, how do I approach my brand to, how do I, what do, what do I say? I mean, that's really what we're trying to, what language do you use to convince people, look, I'm not full of shit. Right. Well, so that that question is is it, it in some ways answers itself. So so because that's not that's not the question I would ask you if if John you wanted to run as a candidate. Okay. I would say to you, John, what really matters to you? What are what are the values that matter most to you? Before you spoke to anybody else, you would tell me. We would talk. I would want to get to the core of what makes you who you are, and and then when I know that, then we find ways of talking about it. But we don't say, how can I talk about it so that I look like a progressive? What we find are <laughs> the core values that make you a progressive. And then we find ways to communicate that to people that inspire them. And then they know when it's BS and when it's not. No, they can feel it. I you know it. I appreciate that. And that, I wasn't really asking that. How can I make them believe that I forget? It, but, but truly, you know, what I've, I've interviewed a lot of progressive candidates. Right. And one of the right. failings that I've seen the, in many of the younger ones, right, the newer ones, the, the guys first starting out. You get, oh, I see what you're asking. Right? Okay, keep on. You get some of the ones that are more seasoned and they understand how to, you know, say things in a way to address whatever audience still holding true to their values. That's where I'm going at here is how do we work with Dems in that, that language? Is that part of what you're going to be discussing is really where I'm going? It, it, it isn't, but it is part of the work that I do. Okay. So, so I think your question is actually a really good one. So if I would look at some of these young, fiery progressives, the ones that are working and the ones that aren't. Right. When they work, what, what people want is an invitation, right? So a, a, a progressive that's got is principled, but they're, they come off as, as critical um, and, and as seemingly negative, and they don't mean to. They, they're really actually quite aspirational people. But, but the way to frame that, if you have a deeply held belief, is you want to extend an invitation to others to believe that with you and then explain why, right? But now the doors are open instead of me pushing a critical agenda. Yeah, we all have problems with the system. So, but if you want to gather support, you have to extend an invitation. So that's a style thing. And I think that's what more seasoned candidates learn over time. That's, yes, that's a beautiful way of saying it. So I want to give you a scenario. All right. Okay. And I just want to, just want to go, as I love what you're saying here. I test very poorly, but <laughs> give it. You don't have to, you're not running. So uh, it's not a state run. It's not a state test or anything. Well, Standardized test I'm doing. Right. No, so I'm a, I'm a, uh, you're a Dem candidate. You believe in the Dem values, and one of those values is we got to get rid of fossil fuels. Okay, yeah. you're in a district that includes where the Jordan Cove pipeline would run through, but you want to hold true to your Dem values. But you've got a lot of workers who work in a fossil fuel industry already, and you need to address those constituents. How do you say to them, "I'm not against you. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm against the industry you're in, and I want to help you." move into how, how you know how do you talk that's that seems to be a big gap right there how do you talk to fossil fuel industry workers in the industry as a progressive it's really it's tough i mean what what i'm about to say is gonna is is a bit heresy but i think it's where we are as progressives uh, and and we have to be willing to risk this um we have to stop counting votes all the time um, so, so that's how we get into these compromise positions where it's like, well, my constituents want all of these things and I, I better try to cut the baby so that I don't alienate them. Tell them the truth that, that appreciate that your jobs are on the line and, and I, and I don't want to dishonor that in any way. And I'm also very concerned about what's going to happen environmentally f f for you, for your children, for your children's children. I mean, at some point we have to begin to make a transition. And I know this may be a hardship for you, and I'm not asking, I'm not trying to take something from you, but I'm asking you to join me in a vision for making a transition that's critical, not just to our present moment, but to generations down the line. And, and some people are, are, aren't gonna buy it, but some people will. 
And that's what I mean about an invitation. Join me in this. Not like, not, not criticize. We know fossil fuels are bad. I've got to still feed my family. So I don't know exactly. This is exactly what I'm saying. The principle is I don't want people to lose their jobs. But the principle I'm standing on is that fossil fuels are doomed. And so we need to start thinking in a visionary terms about solutions. And I'm inviting you, Voter X, to join me in that. I think that's great. Maybe you should run for office. <laughs> that was I, don't, I don't think I'm destined for office, but but that's that's how we want to frame it. I, I think that tone is so refreshing for voters. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and 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 it's on a, in a general way. What you're really saying, if if I mean, is that stand your ground, stand your ground on your values, right? Stand your ground and and don't argue. Invite. Don't argue. Okay. Don't don't bicker. Don't, to speak directly to voters, you know, we get into the...